My social media director here has an enticing offer for you to subscribe to this channel. Come back later, I'm eating. Is it any wonder I don't have more subscribers? Apparently, there's no satisfying the demand for SUVs and crossovers. Seems like Chevrolet already covers that market like no other automaker. And it's not done. Make room for the all-new Trailblazer that slots in between Trax and Equinox. And there's still Blazer, Traverse, Tahoe, and Suburban after those. When it comes to the highly fought-over utility segment, the Bowtie brand covers its bases times two. For those not immersed in the automotive world, the name is a little controversial. Trailblazer used to be an SUV based on General Motors' mid-size pickup architecture and used to seat up to seven. Now it's a small crossover that rides on the same platform as Buick Encore GX. At least this isn't the Trax GX. The fact that there are two Encores is confusing. Both it and Trailblazer are built in South Korea. And while I'm on the subject of Buick, let me show you the GX interior quickly. This is the higher ST trim that falls short of the premium materials and details expected from the Tri-Shield folks. Move to the Chevy and you have to ask yourself, were these two cabins switched at birth? How did the Trailblazer get better looking materials and real stitching? Plus, the price is lower. A base front drive model goes for $20,000, so long as you're okay with white paint and steel wheels with plastic covers. This active model gets a redesigned lower fascia for better approach angle, plus tires and dampers optimized for rough gravel roads. Nearly fully loaded with all-wheel drive, it stickers for $32,350. The front drive GX I drove retailed for $34,000. There are two three-cylinder turbo engines available. The 1.2-liter is front-drive only and mated to a continuously variable transmission. This 1.3-liter unit is the way to go. It's more powerful at 155 horsepower and 174 pound-feet of torque. Ordered as a front driver, it gets a CVT. With all-wheel drive, it's a nine-speed gearbox. Manual shifting is done here. All-wheel drive is a selectable mode, and it does not default to front drive when the car is shut off. It can tow up to 1,000 pounds. One of Trailblazer's competitors is Jeep Renegade, and I've complained that it has a coarse, rough-sounding engine. Surprisingly, this three-cylinder is kind of smooth. And it feels punchy off the line, uh, emphasis on feels. If you're actually doing the numbers, this is not a quick car. Zero to 60 happens in nine and a half seconds. That's Prius territory. I had no issues merging into highway traffic though. In the front drive Buick, I noticed a bit of torque steer under hard throttle off the line. All wheel drive takes care of that. So I've driven the continuously variable transmission in the Encore GX and I gotta say, I highly prefer the nine speed here. Shifts are nice and crisp and under hard acceleration, it just sounds and feels better. Remember, to get it, the bigger engine and all wheel drive is a must. Between the excellent visibility, the higher ride height and the good looking cabin, Trailblazer is a good place to spend a lot of time, even though it seems it's not quite as hushed as the Buick. Ride comfort is pretty good. Now here comes a big speed bump. And yeah, it bucks a bit, but it's got a short wheelbase. It's gonna do that. I did not off-road the Trailblazer. All-wheel drive active models have nearly eight inches of ground clearance. That's enough to motor over rough forest service roads and get hikers to the trailhead without breaking a sweat. Trailblazer's handling is actually pretty good. Not a ton of road feel. And yeah, chuck it hard into a corner and there's going to be some body roll because, you know, it's a crossover. But uh, steering weight is not too light, not too heavy, just right down the middle. The target demographic should enjoy the dynamic. Subaru Crosstrek and Mazda CX-30 might be a little bit more fun. That's why there are test drives to see which one appeals to you. Fuel economy. Uh, the EPA rates the all-wheel drive Trailblazer at an average of 28 miles per gallon. Now, take into consideration that the all-new 2021 Nissan Rogue, which is roomier, averages the same. So here, it's just okay. 
Though really, most of the small crossovers average about the same, so there's that. At least it drinks regular grade fuel. And in some ways, Trailblazer's compact size is a win, especially in crowded urban areas. For the longest time, General Motors didn't really allow owners to turn off the automatic engine stop-start system. Uh, this one is really pretty smooth and can be turned off. There's a button right here. But chances are you'll leave it on because it's fairly unobtrusive. Automatic emergency braking with pedestrian detection is standard. That's good. So is lane keep assist, though it does allow a certain amount of wandering between the stripes. And if you want adaptive cruise control, that's part of an option package. So get your wallet out. That $1,700 technology package also adds a Bose sound system, LED headlights, and a better rear vision camera. Chevy's interior decorator did a commendable job in here, though if soft-touch materials are your thing, these are mostly hard. Where elbows land, uh, they're soft-ish. And dang, a heated wheel does not happen in Trailblazer. Up front, interior space is not that much different from Equinox. The only real difference is a loss of around two inches in hip and shoulder room. The heated leatherette chair cushions are on the shorter side for the long-legged. Plenty of places to squirrel things away. That makes life easier. Door pockets take big water bottles. The center console is very deep. Keep a lot of things in here. And it could be hard to find something at the bottom. There's even a slot for cell phones, though not sure I want to put hot coffee next to mine. The technology package adds wireless charging, plus no need to plug the phone in to get Android Auto and Apple CarPlay. That's usually reserved for higher-end vehicles. The Bose audio is good, not awesome, makes me wonder about the sound of lesser systems. For single-zone automatic climate control, step up to the $620 convenience package that adds extra power ports in the back for Evil Twin. GM's user interface is well done. Excellent response, clear and intuitive flow. All in all, Trailblazer looks good and works great inside. This is equipped with the optional kick to open tailgate that projects a Chevy logo onto the ground so you know where to kick. However, even on this overcast Seattle day, it's really tough to see. It's pretty much only good at dusk or at night. There's a lot to cover in here, no pun intended. Not only does the floor drop to a lower level to max out cargo room, it's reversible. This smooth side is a lot easier to wipe mud and junk off of. Little pockets keep bottles from rolling around. The cargo hold is small enough that remote releases aren't necessary. And while there's no 40-20-40 split option, the ability to haul large, long things is something that most modern vehicles can't do. Encore GX does this too. Honda HRV is almost magical in that it can take on eight packs of the two ply. Trailblazer stops short at an easy six, the same as Nissan Rogue Sport. I'll assume the backseat is not nearly as big as the old Trailblazer, huh? What do you know? I'm the backseat specialist, okay? Sorry. The backseat is not as roomy as the old Trailblazer, uh, but it's still pretty good, actually. Headroom, got about that much knee leg and foot room, kind of generous. Cushions are high enough so that thigh support is excellent. Uh, the door opening's a little bit on the small side if you're hauling car seats in and out. You could get one of those fancy swell bottles here, no problem. Even with this trick folding seat, two pockets, nicely done, Chevy. You can charge anything back here, including a computer. And remember, this has a 4G wireless hotspot built into it. The floor isn't completely flat, though the drive shaft tunnel isn't all that big. There are curtain airbags, of course, and side impact bags in the seats. Nice for safety. Now, can you put three adults back here? Yeah, might be a bit crowded though. Two, two will be perfectly comfortable. As for design, Trailblazer has its own vibe and doesn't look like an Encore GX with a new grill and badge. Good to see those days are largely over at GM. The two-tone roof treatment that comes with Active and RS versions adds pop. The rugged look in Zeus bronze over mosaic black seems to draw a lot of eyeballs. I got more curious people than average wondering about the Trailblazer. A guy at Costco thought it might be his next rig, downsizing from a Toyota Highlander. Oh, and the smoked chrome accents look good. The sweet spot for Trailblazer is a well-optioned all-wheel drive LT model that goes for $27,700. 
Load it up further with adaptive cruise, sunroof, and power tailgate, and it's 30 grand. Now, traditionally, the general leaves room for spirited haggling, so at the very least, get a price quote if you're mildly interested. Let's wrap this up with Red Light Green Light. Green Light. The design, available tech, and packaging of Trailblazer, especially the active model, nails the look and utility that people want inside and out. The cabin ambiance appears a class more expensive than it is. Buick, have you seen this? Every vehicle in this segment should have that front folding seat. Can you tell I haul a lot of long things? Yellow light. Uh, the CVT is well done. Just know that the 9-speed will appeal to picky drivers. Fuel economy is on par with direct competitors, but not much better than crossovers the next size up. The back seat is good for two full-sized adults, but door openings are kind of small. Red light. It might be less expensive than Encore GX, but retail price is high. That might be GM's pricing structure that often leaves room to haggle. Just saying, get a price quote. And no available heated wheel, not even on fancy models. That will cause the Frostbite Falls crowd to consider something else. No, Trailblazer is not the mid-sized truck-based SUV it once was. Considering how Ford conjured up emotion and heritage with Bronco, it could be argued Chevy missed an opportunity. On the other hand, the old Trailblazer never had that kind of legacy. I can understand why people like the Trailblazer. The whole package is kind of appealing, but you know, vehicles are big investments, so if you're not test driving, test driving, test driving, you're not doing it right. If you need all-wheel drive, look at HRV, Seltos, and Kona. Uh, Front-wheel drive, look at Kicks or Soul. It's important to get out and experience these vehicles yourself because you never know until you know. The plucky Trailblazer may not be the SUV it was before, but it sets a high bar for the nameplate going forward. I have to say, this one surprised me a bit. If you check out my Buick Encore GX video, I liked it just fine, but the Trailblazer has much more personality at a lower price. If I've learned anything in the 20 years that I've been doing this, it's that some vehicles just have a certain something. This is like Kia Soul in that regard. The packaging and personality rise above the sum of the parts. No fun fact this time, but kind of a cool story. I was contacted by a viewer who lives in Australia and he grew up in the Seattle area and turns out that his mom and dad watched these reviews simply because they want to see the scenery that I shoot in, that it reminds them of the Pacific Northwest. So he ended up giving me the address of where he grew up. Uh, does this look familiar? Hmm? The neighborhood? I think it probably should. Uh, thanks for watching, thanks for contacting me, and I would suggest that everybody subscribe to this channel and click notifications. I have to say that, I'm a YouTuber, okay? And I'm probably not gonna show your neighborhood, but hey, you know, the car reviews aren't half bad, right? Yeah, that's Driven, I'm Tom Volk. There you go, that's very cool, yeah.